Hey you, welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue and we are here in Gardening Zone 6B in New England. And I am, I am sitting on top of my kitchen table for the sheer joy of sitting on top of my kitchen table. Um, God, some days, I gotta wonder some days if I'm a house cat, but really the deal is this kitchen, <laughs> My kitchen is my lab, is my workspace is, I love this kitchen, oh my God. Um, and so the table, the table is generally really full of stuff. Um, it's more of a depot than anything. We don't do a lot of eating in this room. Um, we do a lot of cooking, <laughs> we do a lot of projects, and inevitably I wind up with a box, a box, right? A box like that on the kitchen table that just grows and grows and grows. And it's got tools in it. And it's got, sometimes it's got potting soil in it. Um, I hate to refer to these as a doom box, but um, I've got a handful of these little doom boxes all over the place. And generally they're right on top of the kitchen table. So anyway, the kitchen table, the kitchen table has very little on it. And so I'm feeling relieved to sit on the kitchen table. There's construction going on upstairs. Rain is building some cabinets. I'm super excited to see what goes on up there. Um, I want to say thank you. First and foremost, thank you so very much. The um, I know y'all are looking at that video because I get to see the numbers, right? Um, and I get to read the comments and thank you. Everybody had something beautiful and supportive to say. It really made me feel renewed. Thank you. Uh, and so I feel called to say more. I spend a fair amount of time navel gazing. <laughs> I spend a fair amount of time also wondering why I do this right? And not in a, oh my God, this is horrible. Why do I do this? Um, oh, the cabbage worms do make me feel like that. Uh, but in more of a, uh, hey, what's the root of this? What's going on here? Um, more of a trying to understand my own footing. And there are a lot of reasons. This is a many layered onion. Confession. I play this game with myself. It's an anxiety game. It's so much fun. I call it the apocalypse game, right? In which I figure out if in a post-apocalyptic situation, I would have enough skill or worth to the group to not get eaten. Do you play this game? I know somebody else plays this game. I know a lot of people who play this game actually. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is I want to learn how to do all the things, right? I'd love to be handy. Um, but my plans for things going sideways really all include gathering the wagons, you know, bringing everybody together. For example, I'm really hoping somebody else will keep the bees because the whole bunch of us are super allergic. Listen, I was out back with friends last night. It was, it was, oh gosh, it was dusky. And the goats were getting ready to go to bed. Um, and we were hanging out and we were watching the goats. And I, I was just like, damn, they're just being goats, you know. Um, we could be on beaches eating fruit, right? No, no, <laughs> we're all worried about getting to work on time and our hustles and I want to build hearth. On the very bright side of it, I'm getting the opportunity to be intimately involved with the earth, with the food that I eat, and I'm learning skills. Who even am I anymore? If I had gone back in time and told my 19 year old self that this is where I was gonna be when I hit my 50s, she would have laughed. She would have laughed. But I also, I think she would have been kind of delighted because odds are 
Had I run into her, she'd probably be pasting something together to take to the local Kinko's. Also, my 19-year-old self was fresh off reading the Marx Engels primer. I've always really liked learning how to do stuff. So on a cellular level, it's nourishing. It's not just the apocalypse game. It's, and it's more than just something to do. You know the joy, you're gardening, you know? It's so many beautiful stages. There's the hoping, there's the setting up, there's, there's the seeds, there's seeing them sprout, putting them out to harden off, getting them in the ground, and event, and you know, and tending over them until they bear fruit, and then picking that fruit, and man, saying thank you with every bean that I pull. It just makes me so full. And then to be able to take that and feed my family and give to my friends and trade back and forth and around, it's just, it, it's good. It's good. And we're gonna eat those beans all winter, right? Um, <laughs> the joyful aspect definitely takes over. And I'm the last person who would call me self-disciplined. Um, <laughs> So it must be joy motivating me. It's either joy or curiosity. I'm all in on that stuff. Um, and I am, um, I feel a spiritual connection. So this will be our fourth season gardening here. And um, man, I have learned an awful lot in the last three years. I don't know if you know the story about how, how we came upon this house. I firmly believe we were directed to this home. Everything just absolutely fell into place, one thing after another, in such a magnificent way. Uh, we met our realtor through serendipity. We were ready to, we had put down an offer on another house and then decided we didn't want it, but we loved our realtor and it took us a really long time to tell her we didn't want it. And when we did, um, we were looking online not 20 minutes later and this property showed up and she, uh, she got us out here and we saw it that day and we closed early and we moved in on a bright November day and it was cold um i think we moved in on the 21st it was the monday after we closed and a few months later the world shut down how weird right and this house has changed us and it's not just being you know all together for the last three years um <laughs> under the same roof. Although it's been a pretty freaking great to have all of us together under the same roof the last three years. Um, my God, the growth I've seen in us all, I really feel like we're where we're supposed to be. And I'm a seeker. I've always been a seeker. Um, I love the patterns of math. I love the fractalized, repeated infinities in physics and nature and the way things come together. So finding ourselves here in the safe harbor of this little town, snuggled in the warm arms of the Commonwealth and uh, I wasn't gonna buy a house, right? I didn't wanna buy a house, uh, but Bill really wanted a house and we took a leap of faith and wow, um, wow, so much, right? But like with any piece of property, immediately there's stuff to be done and you wanna make it yours and you want it to suit your purposes the way that you are going to use the land. Um, so there, a lot of work has gone into this. And 
it's drawn us together as a family. I have become a huge fan of multi-generational living. It is fantastic having Liv and Raina here. Um, man. Yeah, it's really good. I'm not gonna dwell on, oh, when they go away, I will miss them so much because I will. Um, I'm just gonna enjoy them being here while they are. It's pretty freaking great. The more I look at it, and I look at it from a lot of vantage points because I am a curious cuss. Um, the more I think about it, the more I know we're supposed to be here. Um, I know it in my bones. Something's going on here. This is, we landed in fertile dirt um, and we are all just growing together. This is all right. This is all right. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for hanging out today while I think out loud. Um, if you have any feedback, please hit me up in the comments. I would love to know where you're at too. And I will catch you up soon. Take care. Parenthetical. Yes, I know. Goats are livestock, not people. Just wanted to make that clear.